It says right here, it says, he's praying for all believers in, in John chapter 17. This whole chapter 17 is just all red letters. It's just a major prayer. It goes on and on. It's just all red letters. It's the red letters of Jesus. He's praying, praying, praying. He starts out 17 praying the first paragraph for himself. He actually prays for himself. And then he goes for a little lengthy white time. He's praying for his disciples. But then he starts praying for all people that come to believe in the truth through their testimony, through his disciples. He's praying for all people to become believers. And this is what he says. I pray, he says, this is chapter verse 20. He, he actually in John 17, 20, he says, I do not pray for these alone. He, he shifts gears. He's not just for the disciples now. He's going for all believers. Okay? I do not pray for these. You can go there if you want to go there. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. Through their word. Through the, you know their ministry. They're, they're taking on. They're ta I'm passing the baton. Okay, they're going to take off. They're going to run, they're going to run from here. And, and whatever people believe in what they're teaching from, you know, through my spirit living, working through them, you know, I'm, I'm now praying for those believers to come to know. That's us. Okay? So he's praying for us. That they may, that they may be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me. Are, are you seeing that? There is a connection between you and the whole Trinity, the triune God. You are, can, he said that they may be one in us, as I am one with you, and you are one with me, Father. It's, here's Jesus praying. I pray that I am one with you, and that you are one with me, that they be one in us, and through the power of the Holy Spirit. See the triune God? You're connected to the Trinity, the whole Trinity of God, the triune God. You are one with Him. Amen. Amen. That's your fellowship. Yeah. That is the fellowship. You're not in and out of fellowship. That is the fellowship, who I am in Christ. There it is. He's praying for that. And he's talking here to people saying, I'm inviting you into this fellowship that we have that you obviously don't have. Oh, he's not talking to Christians. <laughs> He's that's not good, talking to believers. That's a good cross-reference. He's not talking to believers. Yeah, yeah. And I'll prove it to you, because look at this. He says, um, verse, seven. verse 8. Verse 8, yeah. Okay, verse 8, it says, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. He's talking to people that are deceived, that don't know the truth. Okay, are you with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then he says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I like how Dylan, Dylan wanted me to start at 7, and that's good, because I want you to see this. It tells you what cleanses you of your, not the confession, it tells you what cleanses you of your sin. You want to see? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Verse 7, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. What does it? The blood. Your many confessions? No, the blood. The blood. He even says it very clearly right there. Then he talks about if, we're, if, we're, if we say we have no sin, we're deceived, we're, we're de the truth is in this. Then he says if we confess our sins, he's faithful to forgive. But then he says again, notice where confession of sins is. It's sandwiched in between two things that no Christian would ever say. Do you have any sin in your life? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh boy, thank God I need to thank God for Jesus. God. I need a savior. Absolutely, I got sin. That makes me, that's why I that's otherwise I wouldn't need him. Yeah. What do I need Jesus for? Yeah. I don't have any sin. Mm. Oh These are boy. Gnostics. These are Gnostics. These are Gnostics that claim they have no sin. He goes, yeah. that's what they go into the next uh, next few few um so he's got six different tapes and that they talk to, 15 minutes each one. And he goes into talking about who he's actually got dealing with. How you see he's dealing with Gnostics is how he began, because the Gnostics, one thing, they didn't believe that they, they didn't believe that, they, that, that Jesus came in the flesh. Yeah. And number two, they didn't believe they have sin. And he deals with the whole flesh thing at the beginning where he's saying, hey, we've touched him. We've seen him. Right? Yeah. Look at the beginning. He says, that, we're talking about that which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, our hands have touched, uh, we've handled. He's talking about, we touched him, he's real, he happened, he came, Jesus was here. He's Gnostics, they don't believe that. And then this whole idea about sin. If you say you have no sin, you're a liar. You're a liar. You're now look at this, I want you to see something. Let's jump, before we go to there, I want you to see this. Um, look, okay, oh, this is good. Mm -hmm. I don't know how people can miss this. I'm going to help you right now. You're going to learn something. If you, if you look at chapter 2, it jumps into my children. See, now he's right. Now you see who he's writing to. Christians.
Christians, children of God, my family, those that have the fellowship of the Father and Son. Now he shifts gears. My children, right? And if you notice, all of chapter 1, it doesn't mention children ever. No. Chapter 2, children, 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 children. Okay? It's transitional. It's mm. Okay? That's good. Now, look at this. Look at verse 20 of chapter 2. He's talking to his children, the children of God. But you have an anointing from the Holy One. And you know all things. I have not written to you because you, know, because you do not know the truth, but because you know it. And that no lie is of the truth. Who is saying they're now, in the truth? He's telling them, you guys know the truth. Here he's talking to people who don't. Yeah. yeah when he says, don't to confess your sins, he's talking to people who are deceived and don't believe they have sin. And he says, you're deceived. You do, you're calling God a liar. You don't know the truth. He's not talking to believers. No, he's talking over here to people who do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Come on. Yeah, the big difference. Are, are you feeling me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and look at this. Let me, let me help you right now, okay? Are your sins forgiven? Yes. Yeah. Do you have to confess to stay forgiven? Yes. yes. No. no. That's my point. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad I'm asking this. I want to get this central here. Hammering. I'm going to show you. Chapter 2, he starts talking to children. Let me show you. And let me, okay, let me help you. I'm going to help you right now. Look what he says to the children. <laughs> not to the Gnostics, not to those that say they have no two, sin, one, two, one, not two. to those that are deceived, two, one, one. but to the children. Yeah. Chapter two. Look what he says in verse 12. Chapter 2, verse 12. Verse 12 sorry. I'm writing you, children, because your sins are forgiving, forgiven for his name's sake. Not because of your many confessions, not because you're good, because he is. It's for his name's sake your sins are forgiven. He's telling you, your sins are forgiven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And not because of something you've done. It's something he did. Mm -hmm. Put your faith in what he did, not what you do. Oh. Are you seeing this? Yeah. Over here he's talking about you've got to confess to get forgiven. Here he's talking about your sins are forgiven. Hello? Mm -hmm. Which is it? John, you're confusing me. Well, maybe he's talking to children now. Maybe he's talking to those who have fellowship with the Father and the Son. Right. Maybe he's talking to those who know the truth and aren't deceived. Oh, boy, we haven't even got started yet. I want to really piece out First John for you, let you see what's really in there, because this is a book on eternal security. Why by the way, Why by the way, First John, chapter, First John, the whole book, five chapters, is nailing eternal security. Yeah. And, and then for them to pull a verse out of First John and say, well, if you don't confess, you're not forgiven. You got to stay confessed to stay clean. Otherwise, oh, God won't fellowship with this sinner if you're not confessing your sins. They pull that out to steal your security. Mm -hmm. Taking yeah. away from the purpose. Oh, of the, my, the purpose of the letter. He security. even says, "You want to go?" Hold yeah, on, go so ahead. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. Well, First John nine clearly says, "If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins." Thank you. But, but look who He's talking to. That's my point. He's talking to people that aren't Christians. Now, if you have, uh, okay, have you confessed yourself a sinner? Yes. Because that's what he's talking about. He's not completely confessing every sin. He's talking about when you come and you confess yourself as, because if you don't confess yourself a sinner, uh -huh. if you don't confess yourself that you have uh -huh. sin, uh -huh. Uh -huh. well, you're not going to see a need for a savior. So what are you trying to I don't need salvation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't need salvation. But if you confess yourself and you have sins, that you are a sinner, that I do sin, but well, then you'll see your need for forgiveness a need for cleansing, right. a need for a savior. Yeah. So what you're doing is you're transitioning into this world of forgiveness that Jesus died 2,000 years ago for you to have through faith, through faith, not through confession, through faith. Yeah. The Bible says, in front, I can show you in Romans 5.1, that we have, faith, we have peace with God because of our faith, because we've been justified by faith. That's why we have peace with God, not because of your many confessions. And the reason I'm telling you this is because that's not supported anywhere else. That, 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 I know, oh, go ahead. Okay, so I think what I understand you're saying is that we confess once. Yes. That you're and a sinner. That you're a sinner, right? And then, and then you're and you forgiven. Don't, and, and yeah, and it. you don't have, and then confession right? of your sin is not something that you're, you have to keep doing. It's not a something you have to, you have to keep doing. 
if you want to confess your sin, if you feel weighing on you and you want to, it's communication, it's relationship. It's not some ritualistic bar of soap that I got to keep confessing to stay clean. It, it is not yeah, that. One more question. Yeah. But how about those that we are Christians? Because I, in the past, I've seen even leaders and even people among Christians, they go back to sin again. So how about they have to confess again? Well, we all do sin against sin. Okay, so they, they're forgiven. Do you want to, let me ask you this. Do you want to be sin conscious? Do you want that? Or do you want to be So what are you doing to righteous con you are Listen, listen. Okay. Your righteousness with God is a gift. Mm. You know what righteousness is? Right, right standing. standing. Right standing. Mm -hmm. And that's a gift. God just gives it to you. Because of your faith. We looked at that before where he says very specifically. He says, for those who work not, you don't work for it, but believe on him who justifies the ungodly. Mm -hmm. He takes your faith and blesses you with righteousness. Gives you right standing as a gift because of your faith. He takes your faith that you believe that he will justify the ungodly. He takes your faith and gives you right standing. Bam, that's where you're right standing. You have right standing with God if you're a believer. Why do, you wanna, why do you want that to hinge on something you have to do when Jesus did it for you? What I'm trying to say, how you talk to those people who are, uh, have committed a sin again once they're Christians? How you talk to them? What, how do you talk to, talk to them? Yeah. How you, what, how do what you do you counsel mean? them, you mean? You have to counsel them, right? What advice would you give them? What are your advice? Somebody who's kind of still sinning. Yeah. Okay, well, I got guys in jail. I go to jail ministry. And I talk to them all the time. And, and they, they have drug addictions. They have serious addictions. They're, they're, they're in there for stealing, robbing. Some of them have serious times. Some of them, you know. And I just tell them the truth. How do I talk to them? Mm -hmm. The Bible says you're a new creature. Mm -hmm. You're new in Christ. He, he died for your sins. Look at. Okay, let's look. You want to see? And, and may I say something to you that might help? Um, you know, in a, when you're in a relationship, with somebody, mm -hmm. okay, and uh, think think of maybe a marriage or just a friendship, and uh, it's a solid relationship. You know, you're you're really connected with each other. Mm -hmm. Like when we were kids, we called each other blood brothers. I don't know if you did that, <laughs> you know. And and way back when, I remember my friend Kirk. You know, we went out and cut ourselves a little bit. Did you ever do that? Yeah, I know you didn't do this, but. You know, we, and we mixed that. our blood and we, we're blood brothers now. And it's a really huge commitment. Well, that huge commitment was like, it doesn't matter what you do, you're still going to be my blood brother. Okay? Okay. But relationally speaking, and I, I find this, Henry, just in my own life, is that if I... If I hurt somebody, I feel like I, I, I need to, I just say, oh, gosh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that or, you know, relationally. Right. But with the Lord and with God, see, he's not in a time box like we are. He's outside of time. Mm -hmm. Here's time. Okay. We're in time. And, and we, we relate to time. But God is out. He's out here. He's looking at time. He says, I forgive you of your sin. Now, he's looking at time, so it doesn't matter if it was in your, your past, way in your past, you were born in sin. Mm -hmm. You were born in sin. Mm -hmm. you, you sin throughout your life, you know, and then, but, dur but to you, you're in time. So relationally speaking, I don't think there's anything wrong if, if, if you say, oh, hey. She's trying to kill you. Uh, for, forget, oh Lord, you know, <laughs> I blew it again, you know. Yeah, that's what I mean. So but, you blow, keep blowing it. But, again, but right? positionally, what I think where Henry is trying to go with this is that you, you are already. You're, you're, yeah. you're, a, you're a son. I mean, he's already forgiven you for all of your sin. Yeah. And John 3, 16, 17, and 18, all we, all we have to do is believe. We don't. The only, the only sin anymore is unbelief. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But we do believe. Mm -hmm. Jesus, Jesus himself said in, in the most popular verse in the world, mm -hmm. 
and in the Bible. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So we know that positionally speaking, we are his sons forever. We can't do anything to change that. Jesus said to Nicodemus in John 3, 3, he says, you must be born again. And Nicodemus says, what, what the heck are you talking about? Can I go, can I go back into my mother's womb? There, it's an impossibility. Jesus is saying, how much more so than when you were born of the Spirit of God, do you think that you can be unborn of the Spirit of God? Mm -hmm. There's no way. You, you definitely are saved. It's done. Capiche forever. Mm -hmm. Okay. But relationally speaking, You're, you're right? talking about what if okay, somebody I'm is done. sinning. I'm somebody, done. I'm done. But, okay. uh, I want to help okay. you. I'm done. But one more thing. Uh, I think there is a... But after that, there's a judgment, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. But, but I, I can show, that's in 1 John 2. It says we can come, we can, it's a, it, no, in 1 John, we're going to see in a second, if we keep going, you're going to see all this. All this is going to make sense in here. But he actually says, we can have confidence in that day of judgment. We can have confidence. And why does it say I can have confidence? I can show you. It says we can have confidence in that day of judgment because as he is, so am I in this world. Mm -hmm. Because when God sees you, he sees Jesus. He doesn't see your sin. Says, I will yeah, and you can have confidence. How in the world can I look forward to standing before God? Now, and, and, and it, not just now, but in between here and there. How can I have confidence knowing I'm still going to sin? Right, right. Well, as long as I confess it? No, because I'm a new creature. No, because God, I, I, I have his righteousness imputed unto me. Because as he is, so am I in this world. That's why. That's what yes, he says. I understand. But, the Christians. But... There is going to be a judgment yes. for unbelievers. Let me, God is dealing. Let me may see. I, may I interrupt? God is dealing please, with one sin. Please let me speak to this. Okay. Okay. Look, there, the judgment that you're talking about is for how we build upon the foundation that has mm -hmm. already built. The Scripture talks of that. So there's, but you're you're talking about two different types of judgment. Oh one yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Eternal okay. life. One's right? like rewards. That's okay. What I'm talking about eternal. Okay. Okay, eternal. okay, yes. and eternal life is—is is your name written in the Lamb's exactly. Book of Life? Yeah, and that's what that's, comes. That's one that's judgment. What I'm talking about. That's for eternity. Okay, and that's what we are focused on right now here in this study is the judgment that is for eternity. Are yeah. we saved? Yes, we are saved. Yes. Okay, now yes. you're talking about there's a second judgment that Paul speaks to. How is it that you build upon the foundation that has already been laid? And yeah. Jesus is the chief cornerstone. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so the things that you do with your life, how you respond to the Lord and what he is doing is a, is a, a judgment of works, a judgment of things that you do. Paul talks about that. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. But that is not a judgment that is tied to whether or not, not you even a are little bit. saved. Not even a little bit. Okay. Uh -huh. So the, there, there are two things that... So you're saying, you know, hey, you know, you could get to, it, did you ever read the scripture there? He says, he was saved, but so as by fire. Because they, they spent their whole life in sin. Yeah, yes. But I know for sure that God, Jesus is the way, the truth, and life, and everything. But I, in the Bible, it talks about that there is a hell. There is a hell for those who were not the bride of Christ. I mean, there is going to be the vision. The non-believers. Yeah. I don't take away yeah. from a hell at all. That's, That's why we need a savior. Yeah. He yeah. saves you from yeah. hell. Yes, for right now, we yeah. confess. But there are many people that aren't saved. No. There are many people that don't believe, in, in, you yeah. know. And, and yeah, there's a hell. There is a wrath of God. But there is no wrath of God for the believer. Yeah. The wrath of God is for the unbelievers, right. the people who reject him. They, he gives you a choice. We have free will. You can choose to be in Christ or in sin. That's and if you're in Christ, you're not in sin. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can show you. You want to see yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, let, let me show you. What you're saying about confess. The confession you have to make is in Romans 10, 9 and 10. That says, but if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and yes. believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, yes. you will be saved. Right. And, That's and, the confession. And, and you got to understand, some, some people are a little slower than others. Yeah, it's true. Okay, so, so just because somebody's not really, you know, they, they're claiming to be Christian and they don't seem to really be okay. doing, <laughs> they don't seem to be really doing as much as I am, 
uh, you got to be careful not to judge them because some people who take get a little slower coming. That's why you got to allow God to work in their life. Right. Okay, because I'm not here to convert anybody. I'm not here to convert anybody. God has to do the converting. I, I'm just here to tell you the truth. And whatever you do with it, that's on you. And I allow somebody else to water that seed. And then God has to make it grow. I'm just here to just to share the truth. Right? Right, right. But look at 1 Corinthians. I want you to see the 1 Corinthians because we're, we're, time is going by fast. But I want you to go to 1 Corinthians so you see something. This is powerful. 1 Corinthians what? 1 Corinthians 16. Uh, 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 okay, hold on. Okay, verse 15. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15, 16 says this. Anybody see it? 1 yes. Corinthians 15, it says, yes. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. Let me ask you, did Christ rise from the dead? Yes. The Bible says, if you confess Christ as Lord and believe that he rose from the dead, you'll be saved. Mm -hmm. So obviously, I believe everybody here that is a Christian believes that he rose from the dead, right? Right. Okay. So it says, if he did not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then your faith is futile and you are still in your sins if he is not risen. Mm. But he is risen. Mm. And if your faith is in a risen Lord, then you shouldn't still be in your sins. Right, right. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's pretty clear to me. Mm -hmm. So you're either in Christ or you're in your sin. Because he has risen. And if he isn't risen, then we would still be in our sins. Oh. It says it in 20. Huh? But in fact, it says it in 20. Yeah. But in fact, Christ has been raised. Thank you. And has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Very good. Good stuff here. But he is risen. I'm excited to tell you as well that my life now is, I, 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 want, to, I want to do it. Like you said, oh. it's not because I have to. Right. I'm, I'm changing even now with this message of grace. Oh, wait a minute. I don't want to do sin. Oh. I want to do righteousness because this, I, the, oh my goodness, I, this is how God sees me. Yes. He sees me complete. Oh. And it is really it says totally you're complete in Christ. my, yeah. mind, well, how about, my mindset. Yeah. How about, hey, I want, I'm complete. <laughs> he yeah. says it. Yeah, in him. It says you're hidden in Christ. I'm hidden in Christ. Yeah. Okay. He says there's, you're, if you're in Christ, you're not in your sin. I'm not in my sin. Okay. It says you've been bought for a price. You're no longer your own. I've been bought for a price. I'm not even my own. God owns me. Yeah. It makes Dude, me super grateful. That's what it says. Okay. That's just, why you need to make it personal. Yeah, yeah. What it oh, says oh. about you, you need, to, you. you need to say about myself. <gasps> I need to speak this. That's what we start out with Romans chapter 8. Yeah. I started out with Romans chapter Before we even go here, I wanted you to see Romans chapter 8. And we walked through <laughs> Romans chapter 8. And what I did was I made it personal. Yeah. Didn't we? Yeah. I made it personal. If God's for me. Nobody can be against me. Yeah. Yeah. Who's going to bring a charge against me? God. He justified me. Who's going to condemn me? Jesus. He's the one who died for me. He's now interceding for me. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, God what can separate me from the love of God? Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ. Yeah. He loves me. We are. Dude. Right? We are I know he's going to work all things out for good. Why? Because I love him. Yes. And I've been called for this purpose. His purpose. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. yeah. You see how you, you personalize it? Amen. Isn't that great? Yeah. It's relationship. You've got to personalize this. <laughs> well, everything I just said is in Romans chapter 8. Yeah. Only difference is where he says, we, we know, we know. If God yeah. be for us. Yeah. Uh, what I did was I personalized it. I said, I, me, me, me. Yeah. That's what you got to do. That's your identity. And that's where you can go read this other stuff. And now it makes sense because I know who I am in Christ. I know I'm a child of God and nothing can take that. And I got total, complete fellowship. I can come boldly to the... Boldly. Do you know what it means to be bold? Head high, chest up. Boldly just come and have time with my Father, God, any time of the day. Especially when you sin. That's when it needs you faith. Especially when he's, that's why it says it's a throne of grace. Come boldly to the throne of grace. That means especially when I sin, I can come to the Father. There's no faith. Jesus bridged the gap. He is not a drawbridge. It's not a drawbridge. He is the bridge. Ha! Ah. 
boldly. He's my father. He's not arms folded. Well, if he confesses, oh, if he apologizes, then I'll, so I'll talk to him. Are you sorry? I want you to, you know, now you go forgive your brother seven times 70 in a day, but me, when you apologize, maybe. <laughs> Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yeah. Didn't he say that? Yeah. Seven times 70 in a day? Is that in what he day, said? In a day. Yeah. Oh, not me, though. Hmm. I want you to be more holy than me. Ridiculous. I want you to show more love than me. Okay. You return evil with good, but me, I'm going to return your evil with evil, unless you apologize. <laughs> Ridiculous. Watch out for him. Are you feeling me? Watch out for I want you to be more blessed to give love than to even receive love. Be more more blessed to give than to receive. I want you to do that, but not me. Uh-huh. I'm more blessed to hold my back and yeah. let you make, wait for you to apologize. Oh, are you feeling me? When I make it comical like that, it's like, okay, now I get it. I, I'm doing that to let you see the facts, the reality, that God is crazy about you. God so loved the whole world. That means every pervert, every terrorist, every Hitler, every slander, loved them all. <laughs> and all of that I'm hoping is that you would just believe in my son for your salvation. Yeah. God so loved the whole world and every sinner in it. Yeah. If God didn't love sinners, he'd have nobody to love. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> he came to sinners. Yeah, Jesus said, I came to serve. I didn't come to, I didn't come to be served. I came to serve you. God is a server. We think we're serving God. He's serving you. You think you're seeking God? He's seeking you. He came to the... You think you're loving God? The Bible says, oh, we, he's loving you. The Bible says that we only love him because he first loved us. Mm -hmm. He says here in his love manifested, not that we love God, but that he loved you. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right, yeah. 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 Oh Man. my gosh, yeah, are you good. kidding me? It's good. What Bible are we reading? We need to really get this and get it from the right direction that God is working from the inside out. Okay. He works in you to will and to do what pleases him. We work that out of us. I get it. You like that? Yeah. I, I, Peter's like, Amen. I That's did. good. He likes it when I get fired like that, huh? He tells I me did. later. He tells me later. <laughs> Peter says, I like that when you get going, man. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> you up instead of being just sad. Oh, doesn't it? No, doesn't it fire? It puts, a, happy. it puts a fire in you. It makes you feel good with God. I like to make God. I like to make God attractive. Come on. That's your prayer. That was your prayer. That was my prayer. I tell people all the time that I prayed one time with God. I went alone with God on my hike and I said, God, I just want to, I just, you know, I just want to make you attractive. I want people to know the, you the way I know you. You know, I, really. I mean, if that's not a spiritual gift, I know that people say, hey, pray for this gift and that gift, you know, all these spiritual gifts, pray for them. And let, let me ask you for the gift of making you attractive. If that's not a spiritual gift, let's make it one. God's like, okay. Yeah. I can do that. You know, brother? Bam! It's my gift. Yeah. And I take it seriously. Since, I, since I was, um, excuse me, huh? since I was 18 years old, I always, somebody invited me to church, and I started to join the church, join the choir, and I really loved it. And um, I kept the word in my mind saying, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And I kept that in my mind. And I always said, God, you will never leave me, don't forsake me. It's true. And till now, God has never left me, nor forsaken me. Amen. So I you, you might leave him. Me. You might forsake him. Yeah. But that's yeah. your mind. The Bible says we're enemies in our mind. That's your thinking. Yeah. See, this is what you got to understand. We are spirit, soul, and body. And where you've been changed... And when you become a Christian, how God sees you a saint and not a sinner, it, your spirit. The Bible says, I could show you, you want to look at it, it says God is the father of our spirits. Look at this. Go to Hebrews. 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 What? Hebrews. Chapter 12, right, Henry? Or 13? Hebrews oh. chapter, let's see, Hebrews, uh, uh, yeah, come on, uh, help me out. Uh, okay, Hebrews 12. 10, 11. Is it 12? Uh, I think it's 11. 11? No, wait a minute. No, Here it is. Hebrews. Hebrews 12, 9. Hebrews 12, 9. Now, now, first off, let me go back. Go, go to Hebrews. I'm gonna, these are all in order. There's a reason why these are in order. 
okay? Two, one is in 10 and one is in two or, or two or not 12. One is in 10. Now, verse 14 of Hebrews 10, 14 says, for by one offering, what offering? Jesus. Jesus, the sacrifice. Because he's, he's, he's actually, he's actually he's talking about these offerings, the Old Testament, and other New Testament, this one offering, Jesus. Many offerings, constant reminder of your sin, could never make you perfect, okay? This one offering perfects you forever. Look, Hebrews 10, 14. For by this one offering, he has perfected forever those that are being sanctified. Now, sanctification is your mind. Your mind gets in the way. I could feel distance from God, but he's not at his end. He didn't distance himself. Mm -hmm. I could feel because of sin in my life or because of certain doctrine. I've been, tradition's been telling me that there is no fellowship for you and you sin. And you could believe that stuff. You could think that, oh, I'm not confessed or have I confessed enough or I better confess. And you could think that there's distance between you and God because my mind is telling me that, but it's not true because you've been perfected forever in your spirit. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So jump, okay, now you see that? Perfected forever. And it even goes on down here. It says that, um, verse 17, says, but he adds that their sins, their lawless deeds, I'll remember no more. I'm not, I'm not, why you need to confess? So I'm not, I'm trying not to remember them and you're reminding me? Well, yeah. Why are you bringing yeah. them up? Right, 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 right. I'll remember them no more. I'm trying, I don't want to think about it. And you want to remind me? Yeah. Come on. Come on. <laughs> and therefore, look at 19. It says, verse 19 of, of 10, it says, Therefore, brethren, having boldness, 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 to, to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. How? Because I confess? No. By the blood. By the blood. Why can I go boldly into the holiest? Because after all, you know, when Jesus died, the curtain was ripped in two. That the, 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 Nobody can go into the most holy of holies except the high priest. Okay, when Jesus died, he became the high priest and he tore that curtain in two. So there's no blockage between you and God. You can come into, right here it says you can come boldly to the holiest. Come anytime through the blood. Yeah. Trusting in the blood. Not my confessions. Whoa! But through the blood. Okay, so you see that now. That now, what problem? What, now here's the problem. We start to think about my the problem. I'm sinning you know, because where the mind goes, the body follows. You don't have to worry about your actions, right? You got to worry because where the mind goes, the body follows, right? So you don't have to worry about your actions. What are you thinking? What's going on? Your your actions are going to follow what you think, right? So that's why we need to get our mind tuned into who I am in the spirit. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. in the spirit is where it happened. That's where that's where I'm a new creature and all things are new. That's why I, in here. All things aren't new. I don't feel like a child of God. I, I don't feel like a saint. Why? Because you're going by feelings. Uh -huh. Mind. Mm. Yeah. You've seen your actions, and I'm sure not acting perfect. Mm. Mind. But you've got to key your mind into your spirit. Look, come on, help you. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You ready? Yep. Ready. Jump to chapter 12. Look what it says here. Hebrews 12. Hebrews, Hebrews 12, same Hebrews, but this is all in Hebrews. Hebrews 12. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us. And we paid them respect. This is after he's talking about how God corrects his children. Now understand, God is not, you don't have to fear correction from God. Uh -huh. You do not have to fear correction from God. I can, I can respect it. I can look forward to it. I can ask for it. Please correct me, Father, if there's areas that need to be corrected. Come on, help me out. Mm. You know, but don't, don't, don't hurt me. <laughs> okay. Be gentle. Right. Yeah, right? Come on. He says... Come on, you're okay. talking to you're okay. talking to dad here. Can we read it? Right? Now? So check it out. Okay. Thank you. Shall we not much rather be subjection to the father of spirit. spirits? Spirit. Or spirit. It's in your spirit that he changes you. Jump ahead. Look at verse 23. Same chapter. To the general assembly and the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven. That's us. Right? The church of the firstborn, okay, who are registered in heaven, that's us. We are the firstborn to Jesus Christ. We're born because of him. Thank you. Born again, believers. Oh, yeah. To God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect. Made perfect. That's where you're made perfect, in the spirit. Yay. He's the father of your spirits. Yeah. We are spirit, soul, and body. Yeah. That's where, that's where you can lock in. Lock your mind into who you are in the spirit and you'll start living out that identity that you have in Christ. 
Okay, you are, God is not looking at you according to what you do, what you think, or what you're doing. He's looking at you to who you are in the spirit. He is the father of spirits. Amen. You're my child. It's a done deal. Done deal. The sooner you realize that, the more you'll start to live out your identity. Realize your identity and you'll live that out. I'm not going to be Dylan because I'm not Dylan. I'm Henry. I'm going to be Henry because I know myself to be Henry. Well, I'm not going to be an unbeliever. I'm not going to be a, a non-Christian because I know I'm, I, I'm a Christian. When you get your identity locked into who you are, you'll live that out. You're going to be who you are. Ha! Mm -hmm. ah! And a lot of people are walking around as if they got spiritual amnesia because they, they don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. They don't know who they are in Christ. How good they got it. The price that was paid for you to have it. Mm -hmm. The adoption that took place. The born again experience that you're a new creature in Christ. Mm -hmm. They don't understand that. No. So they're not walking it out the way they should. Oh! Yay. Maybe something they don't understand it because we've never been taught that. Thank you. This morning, you're teaching uh, it. Yeah. Mm. yeah. What is it, First Thessalonians? Look at First Thessalonians, right? First Thessalonians? Is it First Thessalonians? Is that what I said? First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians, sorry. Yeah. I got Dylan here to correct me. <laughs> right? Yeah. Is it first? Well, what is it where it says uh, spirit's own body, Dylan? Oh, that's the end of uh, Corinthians. The Second Corinthians, the last. No. Where it says, I no, pray it's in Thessalonians, whole, isn't it? But it says, that I pray that your whole body, soul, yeah. and spirit. That's oh. the Second Corinthians, the last verse. Okay. Isn't okay. it? Okay. No, I thought it was Thessalonians. Maybe it is, too. It is. It is? Okay. It's only in one place. It's oh, in Thessalonians. Thessalonians? Thessalonians. Oh, let me check. Thessalonians. Thessalonians. So, so I, what do I keep saying? <laughs> Uh, oh, oh, yeah, no, 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 it's, it's yeah, 523, yeah. 523. There it right. is. Oh, yeah. 523. Oh, yeah. 523. <laughs> new book in 523, book. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 I'm sorry. 523, look at this. I want you to see this because this is important. A lot of people think we're just, uh, we're just uh, um, soul and body and soul. Chapter 3. Okay, a lot of people, most people Five, think we're just body and soul, right? Yeah. Right? Thank you. <laughs> I don't want my soul to be damned to hell. Yeah. You know, right? <laughs> And we know that our body dies and our soul goes on to go somewhere, right? Oh, we understand that. But the Bible says we're actually spirit, soul, and body. Yay. Oh, Look, see, okay. Yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Verse 23, 423. Now may the God of oh, yeah. peace himself sanctify you completely. See, there is a sanctifying process going on in our brain. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. For he who calls you is faithful, who also he will do it. Right. So he who begins that good work in you, he's going to see it to completion. Right? Yeah. Amen. But we're spirit, soul, and body. But so where God has dealt with you, the Bible said we just read, he's father of your spirits. That's where you've been adopted. That's who you are, a child of God. That's where you know. And now we just need to get my mind keyed into that. Mindset. Stop yeah. seeing yourself an enemy of God. The Bible says you're an enemy with God in your mind. Not in your spirit. No. Unless you're an unbeliever, well, then your spirit is, uh -huh. he's not your father. You're child of the devil. Repent, repent. Yeah. Change your mind about God. So you, boy, man, I love, repentance is going all, uh, on all the time in my, uh, my jail ministry. I see repentance going on all the time when I see these faces beaming. They're like locking into what I'm saying and the class is flowing. They keep, they keep, they keep bringing, they're just, one guy told me last week, he, he said, I told my bunkie, man, this is my bunkie, man. I told him to get in here, man. You need to come in here, hear him. You know, I go in there, I go into jail ministry. Yeah, I go into the jail ministry and they, know, they normally say uh, religious services, you know, Bible study, you know, and they'll say that. But now that I go in there, they go, Henry's here. Henry's <laughs> 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 here. funny. They, just <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they know you. Yeah. They all know and I'm telling them this. I don't pamper it. I don't butter it up. I don't try to make... Oh, well, I don't want to tell them that because yeah, they know. Right. No, that's yeah. the key. You need to know your identity so you lock into this place. You know, come on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what they're doing? They're falling in love with God. They're falling in love with... The, the Bible says this is eternal life, that you know the one true God and the one whom he sent. Yeah. They're knowing God. Yeah. That's eternal life. Yeah. And then he takes it from there. Uh -huh. I mean, it's not up to me. Uh -huh. Yeah. I gotta let God have His hand in this. Yeah, true. Oh. Yeah. And He might have to correct them a few. They might have to fall a few times. You know, little kids they have to fall a few times before they stay standing. Yeah. True. You know, right? Yeah. Any little kid, you when they're born, they don't come out. Woo! Look, I'm Joe. Oh, let's go, go. Let's go do a marathon. <laughs> yeah. No, they crawl. 
They crawl and eventually they barely walk and eventually they try and walk and yeah. right? And, and the father is there saying, come on, you can do this, come on. You know, and they, they call, they don't, they encourage them encourage to do you know, yeah, yeah, that's God. Encourage With a new, co new covenant, born again believer. Yeah. And, and that's why he talks about being walking in the spirit. That's why he talks about being born again. These are like baby things. But you got to learn to walk in the spirit. Yeah. You got to be born again. You got to be born into this. And then you got to learn to walk. And you might have to fall, bump your head a few times before you stay standing. I did. Yeah, you do. I did. I went to Bible study in jail so many times. And you know what? I went right back to my dope. Oh my. Most of you guys who don't know me, I was drug addict, convict, been to San Quentin, toughest prison in California, San Quentin. Oh my I've been there. Did you survive? Yeah. Huh? Survive? No, I yeah. died. Yeah. He, died in the, he died in the jail. They yeah. killed me. <laughs> no, I was stabbed in my face. I was stabbed right here, right below my eye. I was stabbed. West yeah. Block, San Quentin, West Block. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but yeah, and, and I would go, I go back to drugs, and I come to know God. I get into my Bible in jail, and come to know God so good. I see miracles. I know it's the real deal, and I confess sin, and I confess God, and I confess did all my confessor was all worn out. You know, I did all that. And you know what? And I still fell. Yeah. You know, and, and so, and, and, I, felt, and I, had to, I had to fall a few times to really get it. But God eventually got me to where I needed yeah. to hear what I needed mm. to hear. Somebody got in my face and said, you need to quit playing with God. And I was like, amen to that. Thank you. At the time, it hurt. Correction, when it's happening, is that the Bible says, when, when, oh, discipline is never fun when it's happening. But later on, when you look back and you say, wow, oh, amen to that. Yeah. Right? That's what the Bible says. Yeah. Yeah. So discipline isn't always good. Let me tell you, because this correction of God, I want to share this with you, because correction of God isn't like we think it is. Let me tell you how God corrected me when I was in jail, when I was first going to jail. And, and God would correct me. One time, one time I was, went out to the yard. Yeah. I went out to the yard, and, and, there was, and I had been going to Bible studies, going to church. And I, but I'm a new Christian. and I'm, I'm, This was at Vacaville, a prison, not jail, prison. Yeah. Gun towers. You know, yeah. So, and I'm walking out the yard, and there's some guy out there, and he's, he's got his Bible in his hand, and he comes up to me, and he says, hey, how are you doing? What's going on? You, you believe in God? And I go, oh, yeah, yeah, I believe in God, yeah. And he says, oh, great, you're going to church? You go to church services here? And I go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, good, good. You read your Bible? Yeah, you know, oh, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. Great, great. Yeah. Do you cuss? And I was like, uh, <laughs> 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 busted, you know, right? Because, you know, because I'm new to this and I do cuss and I didn't know, you know, I didn't, you, know you don't transition that, you know what I mean? Yeah. still growing, a lot of growth, but that was God correcting me and he used him to do it, right? Yeah. See how God corrects you? But what's funny is I cut him off. I don't want to talk to him anymore, uh. you know, and that's where you feel convicted because that's what happens when you feel convicted by the Holy Spirit. You don't even, it distances you. Now, if he could just convince me, convince that that does not fit in for being Christian, I might have continued the conversation. We might have been able to, but because I felt convicted, yeah. I felt dirty and uncomfortable, and I just wanted to get away from it. That's what conviction, yes. that's why we shouldn't use that word. Yeah. That's why I don't use it. Yeah. Conviction of the Holy Spirit. It's not used in the Bible that way. It's used, the conviction of the Holy just Spirit is used for unbelievers. The Bible says he convicts the world of unbelief. Uh, he one said, sin. convicts the world of, one, sin, of sin. And he tells you what sin that is, unbelief. That's conviction of the Spirit. So I don't even throw that word around. Because I know what it is to be a convict. And it's not, pretty, it's not comfortable for me. Mm -hmm. And it, biblically, when I looked at that to see, does that even, is that really Bible? And it's not. So anyways, I felt convicted and put distance. That's what that does. But if, you could just, if I just convinced him, I would have kept it on. But at the time, it's like I thought about it. I says, you know, that's, that's kind of a... Um, uh, that guy probably thought, well, they didn't go very well, you know, because I left right away. You know, as soon as he said, do you cuss? And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I do. Uh, yeah, okay, well, I'll see you later. Good talking to you. And avoided him. He probably thought they didn't go very well. But here I am sharing that with you 30 years later. Wow. Because it made an impact on me. Yeah. I, it made me evaluate, you know, he's right, though. Yeah. I shouldn't be swearing. But you, you know what I mean? He probably, right? Yeah. And another time I was in there and some guy comes up to me. I, I took the Lord's name in vain. By, you know, I, I didn't really, I was a little too comfortable with that. And some guy, some big guy says, hey, watch your mouth. And I was like, <laughs> what did I say? I had to kind of back up a little bit, kind of do a little rewind and see, what did I say? And I, I realized, oh, I took the Lord's name in vain. Okay. Cor God corrected me. Yeah. And he used him to do it. Yeah, yeah. So you don't have to be afraid of God's correction. He doesn't do it the way you think. He was correcting me on taking the Lord's name in vain. He was correcting me on profanity. He was correcting me, correcting me, correcting me. But it was because I was reading the Bible and I was serious about God now. And now he can correct me. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, I just want to give an announcement before we cut out here. Okay. Um, lots of really good stuff going on. I want to let you know about April 
the 12th, okay? April the 12th is an OASIS meeting right here. It's for the seniors, but we're having a special 20 choir, okay? Oh, wow. That we're gonna have at least 20 in a choir singing and praising God together. And uh, somebody's gonna be on the piano. It's gonna be really, truly special. April 12th, 6.30 p.m. It's a dinner, $15. If you need sponsorship, we can find you sponsorship for the dinner, okay? But I really want every single one of you to be there if you at all possibly can. It's right here in this very room, 6.30 p.m. on Friday, April 12th. And guess who's gonna be the guest speaker? Let me guess. You. Hello. Henry, you. Henry. No, not me. Uh, Henry. Henry, Henry, okay? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. April 12th. <laughs> He's, he's like, I oh, am. Okay. I've only been talking about yeah. <laughs> November of last year. Okay. All right. So, that's really good. Let me now. There, there's another couple of announcements. One is, is that at the towards the end of April, we're going to have another meeting in Tucson. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that's so, that's news to me. That's that is news. Okay. Uh, so those of you that who are interested in going uh, wait the day after he's speaking here You're gonna have him there. That's not what I said. Oh, I said okay. towards the end of April oh, totally I didn't even give it a date. I don't oh. know the date yet, oh. but towards the end of April We're gonna have another meeting in Tucson and I, I don't know Henry's schedule Maybe he won't be able to go. I don't know. We have to work that out but the, the just to let you know of what to start thinking about for the future and in May okay May is our next movie that we gather together right here in this same room. We're gonna have a movie. We had one uh, last, last Friday. Friday. Yeah, it was please, awesome. Please. Great time of fellowship, watching a movie, eating all the popcorn yeah. we possibly could, and lemonade, it's free. You don't have to pay anything, it's free. You can come and we, we had a great time, huh Dylan? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I wanna let you know about that. Couple other things. Uh, June, we've got a mission trip going to the Philippines. June. I'm giving you a heads up before you hear it in church. June, uh, where are we going? <laughs> we've got another mission trip going to the Philippines in December, okay? We've got a mission in August going to Zambia, if you want to go to Zambia. And then another mission to Zambia in November. You heard it here first, okay? You heard it here first. Now you probably hear it out in the service there today. Let's continue to... Uh, realize that God is transforming us with this good news of grace. Mm -hmm. His grace is always upon us. Yes. And one way we can always tell Henry that uh, it's a chastisement of the Lord that's upon us, Hebrews says, is that it yields, it then yields forth the peaceable fruits of righteousness. Okay. You did you, do you remember when you were ever corrected when you were young? Yeah. And then you're like, no, no, I didn't, I didn't steal the cookie. I didn't do that. I didn't have my hand. Yeah. You know, and then, all, and then all of a sudden you say, oh, mom or dad. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and they say, it's okay. And they, they love you and they put, you know, put their arm around you. That's what a loving father and a loving mother does, right? Then you go, oh, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Maybe for some parents did okay, but some parents, no, I'm going to That's yielding <laughs> forth the peaceable fruits of righteousness. Right. That's what you were talking about with, with that guy. That guy didn't really approach you the right way, and it took 30 years, but 30 years later, you're like, oh, God was correcting me. He, yeah. was, he was giving me a little nudge. Hey, Henry, not supposed to do that. It didn't take 30 years. It didn't. <laughs> 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 I'm telling the story. Oh, you're 